Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to discuss how to dispose things correctly. I want to discuss remains of items from spells, what you should be doing with them, where and whatnot. In my past videos, I do discuss what you should be doing with jars of destruction, solid jars, collateral damage, breakup jars, separation jars, hot foot jars. Things in that nature needs to be disposed at a crossroads. You need to find a, a river or a stream of water that's pushing away from you and or you can dispose at the graveyard. And for many of you, you like to bury things. You can bury things by abandoned areas, burn down buildings, things in that sort of nature for stuff that you want to abandon, get away from you, make things to remove themselves from you. It's important that you remove those items so that the spell can continue. And in majority of my videos and most of my videos where I'm working something, I do tell you what to do with it. Either it be in the video or in the comments. So make sure if you're emailing me or asking me a question about YouTube that you look in the comments before you repeat that question again. Because 99% of the time, that question has been answered. Because a lot of you, you just do spells as you see. And you know nothing about disposing. You know nothing about cleansing yourself of after. And then you want to know why you don't get the results. Because you're doing the spell wrong in the first place. Stop doing spells that you don't know nothing about. Just because it looks fun and easy and, and, and it's like, oh my God, I get to fuck up my enemy. You're really fucking yourself up. You know why? Because you're not cleaning up after and you're not disposing it after. This video mainly is going to tell you how to deal with your honey jars, money jars, sweet jars, sugar jars, jars to control. Things that you keep around you, right? So let's talk about control. For a jar, for controlling, if you no longer want to control that person, dispose the remains at a crossroads. That is a four-way street. Not in the middle of the street, not when you're driving out your window. Get out of your car, park, okay, and find an abandoned corner. One of those abandoned corners. There's going to be four because there's four different ways you can go through the streets, right? North, south, east, and west. If it's an abandoned lot, like with a lot of grass and stuff, you can, you can throw it right in there. It's abandoned. They're going to clean it out anyway. So perfect. Okay? You no longer want to control that person. So you want to abandon that. All right? Make sure you take the petition out. That's very important. Take the petition out. The petition can go in hot water. And, you know, after a while when you start work, depending on what you put in there. Because after a while when you start working on something, it starts to break apart and whatnot. And... A lot of you will use brown paper. Brown paper will be very easy to break apart. So half of the time, there's no petition left, right? But if you use a lot of herbs in that controlling jar, take the petition out, and you could cut it up, shred it up, and you could just put that in your regular garbage. The jar then can go into, like I said, one of those abandoned areas. You can even put it at an abandoned corner. Um, like, you know, sometimes where they have houses that you know, if they've been boarded up and whatnot, you can put it right in there, right in that corner. Um, not on the sidewalk, but people got to walk over it. No, like you want to be kind of discreet. Just like when I tell you to put your um, jars that you're done with, like say, um, let me let me mention this. Ammonia jars, actually. For the ammonia jars, you can put that in rivers, in streams, you know, that are dirty, and disgusting and whatnot. And honestly, when you have work to do, to, to get rid of and whatnot. It doesn't matter what people say. Oh, don't put that in the river. There's fish in there. Listen, for all the bitches trying to save the streams, this is not the video for you, nor the video for you to comment, okay? People got shit to do, okay? People got to get rid of this stuff, so you're going to put it where it got to be put in, all right? Find a river, a stream that's flowing away. If it's sitting water, no, you don't put it in there. You don't put it in a lake. You want to get a nice flow and stream of water. And if not, then that abandoned crossword is perfect because I see a lot of you saying, oh, take the ammonia jar and pour it down your toilet. You don't necessarily want to do that as an option. You don't want to put that back in your house. You're clearing things away. Anything that you want to remove, you definitely don't want to pour that back in your house, even when you mop. When I, what do I tell you to do when you, when you do mops, when you mop in your house, when you're using my magic wash to clear up? I tell you to take a bottle of water and I tell you to take something out when you're done mopping that dirty water, right? And I tell you to find a tree, and I tell you to pour it at it. That's the first steps into doing it. And what you do with the remaining water, pour it outside. Pour it outside of the house, especially if you had a lot of heavy energy. You want to, do, you want to remove that. 
If it's energy in which you want to sweeten your house, then yeah, that mop water could go right in the toilet. But if you had a lot of negativity flowing and you had a lot of things going on in the house, that wa mop water got to get out. Okay? So mop water, out the house. Uh, ammonia jars, rivers, okay? You want, to, you want that to flow away from you. You already done asked the favor for things to be turned around in your favor. Not necessarily reversed in all cases. So everybody's telling you, work a ammonia jar is going to revert. No, they're lying. It doesn't always reverse. I've been doing ammonia jars for years. And it will turn that situation around and benefit you. So now, say right now, you couldn't afford your car payments. And then next thing you know, the bank decides it got to be recalled. Right? T that situation is being turned around now. It's not necessarily reversing them, but you can't afford them now. But something that happened in your favor, though, right? Jars in which you're controlling people mentally and whatnot. You don't want to just put that at graveyard and stuff like that. Like, everything is not to be graveyard, to tell you the truth. So, any elements in which you was controlling someone mentally, you need to put that at an abandoned lot. Even if it's a situation or, or space and time where you was... Trying to confuse somebody. And you don't want to really use that confusion jar anymore. That confusion jar needs to go in the river. You want to take the petition out of that too. Okay? So we covered ammonia jars. We covered confusion. We covered mop water. We, we covered controlling. Now let's get into the honey and the sweetening and all of that stuff. Now sugar jars. Let's talk about sugar jars first. With sugar jars, the minute those jars start to harden up, you need to get rid of them. You know why? Because if it was for love or money, your situation is now being stiff. It's going to get a bit tough. It's going to get a bit hard. So if you was using it for money at work and all of a sudden hours got real tight, timing got real tight, and they kind of laid you off, that's because your your, your sugar is, is not being as efficient as it used to be. It, it doesn't have enough energy. That's why I'd be telling y'all to use good products. Because if you use that cheap-ass, hard-ass sugar... Expect it to just be hard. Expect that to affect your money. Expect that to affect love. If you used it for, for your neighbor to sweeten them up to you, to keep them nice and sweet, and now you know you, the shit is kind of hard as a rock, now things between you and him are going to be just as stiff, just as tight. What do you want to do? You want to take that petition out? Mm -hmm. Take the petition out and run some hot water inside that sugar jar. Okay? Try to break it down. If there's no breaking it down to that, you're going to need to make a honey jar a honey jar for that situation because things are going to stay hard and tight between you and that person. The remains for the sugar jar now, you can spread it. Break, try to break it up. You want to try to break it up. You don't want to like put it out hard and stuff. Try to break it up and you could dispose it at like around your property now. It's sugar. It's still sweet, but it's, it's tough. It's tight. Break it up. Another option is to run the hot water on it and let it break apart and just, you know, simmer away. Okay, so you have those two options on that. Now with the honey. Here's the most important things about honey. And the things that I hate about people that make honey jars. And money jars. And anything to sweeten their lives. They always want to throw it away. Why are you disposing a honey jar? If you no longer like him or her, then take the petition out and run it in hot water. Don't let all the hard, you know, the big curios and any type of um, roots that you've used go down in the sink. Get some boiling water. And pour it in there and let the honey, you know, break apart itself. The petition comes out, all right? You can open up the petition and start taking it apart. And then you can get rid of it. You can get rid of it. Um, you know, the, the paper and whatnot, which you use, cut that up really finely. That could go in the garbage. The roots no longer have any use, no power. You didn't work it as much. Put it in the garbage. You don't want to work it. If your honey jar does become tight, hard, stiff, like in these situations, these two jars, my neighbor... Every year she works her jar and every year she brings them back to me. She had company for six weeks and within that six weeks, there was a particular person in her house that was creating so much energy that her jar started to harden up. So after they left, I made four baths for her. And everybody in the house, they do work, except for the people, the family members that come. They don't know about this, their business, their personal business. And I told her for that very reason, keep it to yourself, okay? Her sugar jar is hardened up, her honey jar is hardened up. Six weeks, she couldn't work them. So, for these jars here, they were for different situations and sweetness in her life. And I encourage her to work them every single day. And that's what that woman does. These are, these are the only work that she has. Outside of anything else that I'm doing for her, this is what I tell her to take care of. And I tell her, I said, listen, work these every single day as much as you can. Every single day. For many of you, 
what you start to do with your jars is when you no longer have interest in them, you, you let them harden up purposely and um, then you want to throw them away. No, you can't throw them away like that. You need to take that petition out, run the hot water in them, and if it's become stiff, put it in the microwave, take the metal cap off, of course, all right? You don't want to cause no fire in the microwave, and you bring it down. Bring it down to where you can pull that petition out, pull things apart, the, the, the honey, hot water, let it melt away. Don't just throw your jars away like that. Even if it's for money, you're going to be throwing money away. So what if you're throwing that jar away and then it becomes a, a point in time where it starts to melt down and the honey becomes smoother and you got a, a, a perfectly good honey jar sitting somewhere in the trash, in the garbage, all that energy. If you're not going to put no time and energy into it, nothing's going to happen. So here's what I did for her. I got her jars. These are them here. I began to pull the petition out because I used a different type of petition for certain jars because the stuff in there she's not going to be able to get back again so i created my packet what i did i tied some string alongside of it so when i'm ready i could pull it right out pull that petition out cleaned it off okay and i put them in new jars same petition new honey new herbs new curios new everything and now she's able to rework that same petition i did that for both of her jars the energy that she had sitting in this house from this one particular person was really, really, really tight. So what I did for her, I set lights for her to try to break that energy down. And I did a lot of house of peace because she couldn't do nothing in the home. And this is what she's normally used to. And what I would say is if you have people coming to your house and you know you like to do a lot of work, limit the amount of time they get to come there or they got to go to a hotel because you can't stop and block yourself off. Luckily, her money and the situation for so these jars and love wasn't affected at all, but they did harden up. So now she's reworking them, and she'll, be conti she'll continue to rework them throughout the new year. I always tell you guys to dispose of certain things. For glass jars and situations like that, clean them off. Put them in a the dishwasher. They could be recycled. Wax, depending on what spell that is, I tell you to take it to the crossroads. If it's for love and money, front of the yard or back. And if you live in an apartment building, then you take a, a flower pot and you bury it in there. Get some dirt from Kmart or Walmart. Create your own situation to where you're going to bury the remains near you. So put the dirt at the bottom, put the little bit of wax, wrap it up really good and put it in there. And you're going to use this over and over. Throughout time now, what you can do is like I tell you, which is all of this is in my videos. You start to try to grow something on top of it. So plant some seeds on top of it and see if it grows. That there too helps your situation grow for love, for money, for any situation in which you're trying to bring something to you. Those remains stay close, very close. So if you have a bunch of honey jars, take the petitions out, put them in new jars, put new herbs in and rework that petition again. The old jars, I'm going to run these in hot water, hot, hot, hot water. There's no hard herbs and curios and roots and whatnot in there. So run these in hot water and get a strainer so it won't mess up your sink or wherever you're running that or in the back of the house. Like, you got to think when you do things. If you're going to do a spell to sweeten somebody and he got a wife now or girlfriend, you know, he rocking with somebody new and y'all not together, release that man from that spell. Release him from it. Take the petition out. Take it apart. Run in the hot water. Do what you need to do. I don't think honey jars need to be at crossroads, at graveyards, and things like that at all. See, everybody has their own way of working, and a lot of people that are, that are new to magic, they're creating a lot of fake and false lies and telling you how to work jars. When you're working a honey jar, depending on what type of jar that is, like say you work an obsession jar, only his name goes in there. You want him to be obsessive. Say, I want you to be obsessed with me. You can say me. You can say she. You can say he, you can say they, you can say those type of things. You don't want to be obsessed, right? You don't want to be addicted to him, right? So you don't say your name. You don't say, may Jose be addicted to Sherry. No, no, you don't want to say that. No, may Jose be addicted to me. You're the one working it, right? Right? May Marisol be addicted to Danny. You don't say Danny. Say, may Marisol be addicted to me. You're working it. This is your energy. This is your time. This is your power. So you want to say to me, 
I want him to want me. I want him to need me. I want him to be obsessed. I want him mentally, emotionally, physically to be out of his mind when it comes to thoughts, thinking about me, overthinking. All of that type of stuff goes into your petition. See, a lot of people, they're new to magic. They don't know nothing about it. They've never cleansed. They've never made a bath. They don't know how to make an oil. They don't know how to mix herbs. They don't even know their herbs. But you're trusting in them and watching their videos and having them fuck your life over. Creating all types of fucked up petitions. I'm telling my subscribers how to do it so they can learn. So if you're new here and you've been messing up your life because you've been going to fake people. I can't even. Th here's the thing I don't get. How can you try to scan the spiritual world? How can you try to be fake in the spiritual world? How can you try to be phony in the spiritual world and expect that shit not to creep back up on your ass and get you? If it don't get you, it'll get your kids. It'll come for your unborn. It'll come for your mama. It'll come for every part of your family. So a lot of y'all need to be careful because there's a lot of fake people out there. They can't back nothing up. They read things out of books. They copy off of other people. They can't help you. So if you are not doing your spells correctly, disposing the items correctly, then you're not freeing that spell out 100%. That spell is incomplete. If I work a solid jar and I work it for 21 days in between, I'm going to cleanse the shit out of myself after. And that jar has to go. There's no reason it needs to stay around me. I've done the work on it. I now need to release it. That energy needs to be released. It needs to go up and out and continue to flow away to sour whomever I want to sour. I'm not going to keep it in my backyard. I'm not going to keep it in my bathroom for 30 days. You don't want to hold on to things for, for too long. Even when you work in dark candles. If you stop them and start them, stop them, that's cool. But finish it up. Finish it up. I tell you guys, right before the New Year's, you don't want to have no kind of negative energy building up around your house. You don't even want that type of energy around the holidays around you. And the holidays are, are coming up real soon. So anything you got to finish up, try to finish it up this week. Try to finish it up and do what you need to do. For some of you, you're not strong enough to, to work a spell in 21 days. So that jar continuously needs more. So a lot of you may be disposing things that haven't even built up enough power. Magic takes time, especially when it's dark work. If you've never done it before, it's going to take time and energy. So it's going to need a buildup. If you're trying to rush someone into something, change someone's mind, break someone down, remove them out of a situation, break them up, those spells take their time. They do. Because the energy that you hold and build funds, for some of you, you've never worked those type of stuff. So it needs more time, more working. So a situation like that, working it, keeping it in a dark spot, and then cleaning yourself, protecting yourself, and then going back at it again. Doing the same process, going back at it again until you've built up more than enough energy. There's some people that it'll take them a whole year to break people apart. And sometimes it depends on the spirits and the energy around that person too. So if you're trying to break people up and they haven't been breaking up, they are protected. And or you have no energy and power. You're not that strong for it. They have their guardian angels. They have their spirit guides. And sometimes when you work in the spell and your spirit guide is steering you opposite, listen to your spirit guide. Listen to you. Listen to the person that's spiritually guiding you. If I tell you stop doing that spell, don't do it no more. It's draining you. It's weakening your home and your finances. It's going to affect this and that. And you keep doing it. That's on you now. I've told you not to do it. The spirit guides warned you against it. The saints, they told you they turned their backs on it. So for every reason that things are not going in that direction, pay attention for it. Pay attention to it. If you're going to work a spell and you're going to try to fuck people up and you're not going to get protected and you're not going to dispose it after, all that energy is going to sit around you. It's going to sit around your kids. It's going to sit around your husband. And now you want to know why you fighting and stuff. All of that energy still sits there. So backfiring to the least can turn out in different ways. You can work a spell that you had no business doing and it's automatically pushing back on you because you had no business doing it. See, but a lot of people, they're not going to tell you that. They're going to encourage you to do dark work. They they're going to encourage you to do negative stuff. They're going to encourage you to bring in dark DTs and spirits to your home. And then what? How are you getting them out? How are you getting those spirits out when they start inviting darker spirits to your home? Next thing you know, your home is housed of darkness. Then what you got to do? What are you going to do then? They told you to bring them in. They told you to light it up. 
they told you to build those things and did they tell you how to remove them? No, because them themselves don't know how to. So be very careful with people that are encouraging you to do darkness. I do my defensive magic because it is needed. It is needed. It's defensive magic. I got to defend myself from this. I got to defend her from this. I got to defend my client from this. I got to defend the subscriber from I got to defend them from certain things. So that is why I do it. That's why I have to do it. But it's not an everyday thing in which I enjoy doing dark work. No, I don't even consider it dark work. Because it's defending whatever needs to not be around me, around them, around he, around she, around they. So a lot of people that say, oh, it's baneful magic. No, it's not. No, it's not baneful magic. Not in any type of way. And not every spiritual worker, every witch does baneful magic or dark work or whatever you want to call it. A lot of people are more to the light energy. And when you fuck with them, they're going to fuck with you back. And that is what I need to do. And that's what you need to do to keep yourself up and going and flowing. Then you do it. But there are certain things that you do not mess with. Because there's certain spirits that are waiting for fresh souls. And guess what? The minute you open up your door, they're not going to leave. And that's why a lot of y'all got dark spirits in your house. Don't play with them. Don't feed them. Don't talk to them. A lot of times y'all got to go and get priests to wash these out. Like it becomes serious. Y'all can't sleep. Then there's animal demons coming around y'all. Then your children are seeing things. Then you can't protect yourself because you, you've weakened yourself. And this spirit is powerful. And it's above and beyond what you really bargained for. So be careful who spells you watching. Be careful what spells you're really going to bring in the house and in the home. That energy, if it's good, it can sit around you. Protection jars. Cleansing jars. Those stay around you forever. For protection jars and cleansing jars, you can even bury them on your property. To cleanse you always, to keep you cleansed, and to protect that home always, to protect that energy. But anything other than that, you need to get rid of it. So sugar, good. Honey, good. Protection, good. Cleansing, good. Confusion and controlling, disposing. Okay? Free those people from those spells. It's coming to the end of the year. Open up your freezer. Get rid of jars you've had in there for three, four years. You should have been had this person controlled by then. If that jar alone controls them and you get rid of it and shit starts going back, then you didn't do a good job keeping the enemy away. Those limes, when you get rid of them, they're, they're, they're going to turn pitch black inside. So even though when you do get rid of limes, guess what? They're going to continue to do their job and keep that motherfucker away. Because those limes, let me tell you something, what you should do when you want to bring your limes down, bring them down, let them come down, right? And they're going to turn. Let them turn and then dispose them. Don't necessarily dispose them frozen right away. Give them a chance to turn. Put them in the garage. Put them in the back of the house. Put them somewhere in the back of the apartment building. You know, somewhere in the back of the condo. You know, in the back of the townhouse. In the back. Let it come down a bit. Freezer spells, when they come down, it brings down that energy. It doesn't hold too tough. But that person still has a spell on them. You still created cold energy. So if you've frozen someone and the spell begins to come down and it was just a light spell... And you start seeing them contacting you again. Then you are not protected. You didn't do a good job in shielding yourself. You was relying heavily on a green line. And you can't do that. And limes keep people from talking. And they keep them away. But they're not going to get somebody fired. They're not going to get somebody put out of their apartment building. It's not, it's not, no, you got, no, it's not going to do that. It's not going to get rid of a court case. It's not going to do none of that. And, 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 and read, read the comments. There's a lot of comments. Stop emailing me and asking me if you can do an ammonia jar to get rid of this person, to lose this weight. I, I speak about this. That means you're not listening to my videos, so I don't have time to entertain you. If you don't have time to listen to my entertainment, I don't have time to entertain you. That's just how it goes. Read, read, read the comments. Read the replies. There's a bunch of replies. There's a bunch of people on my channel that give out good information as well they know what they've been doing they've been watching me for a long time they've been building themselves up they are workers themselves there's a lot of positive people on my channel that give good ass advice and i thank y'all for doing that for taking a minute or two out to tell somebody nah do this no don't do that no do this you understand so making your business if you really want to learn 
Because this world of magic and spirituality is not for everybody. It's everybody, everybody not built tough around it. Everybody can't build themselves within it and expect it to protect them. You got to know how to do it. You got to know what you're working with. You're working with hoodoo. You know how hoodoo works. African American folk magic, you're working with the herbs, you're working with the roots, okay? There's no ritual in which you need to be, you know, coming in and, and somebody got to, you got to pay people hundreds of thousands of dollars to get into it. No, nope, not at all. There's no, there's no initiation in who don't need it. No, there's no sacrifices in who don't need it. No, working with your herbs, your roots, your powders, your jars. You're building yourself. You're working your hands of magic. And before you call forth against anyone, make sure you're strong enough to build your spells up. Right? That's basically everything that I wanted to cover. Like, subscribe, and stay blessed.